last day here in Alaska. Let's go fishing. So we're currently here in Valdez, Alaska. Man, look at the views around us. So we're currently driving down to Allison Point Campground. Uh, that seems to be a spot during this trip, but definitely check out the uh, rest of the trip in the link down below. This is our last day here in Alaska. So we're currently using a uh, Blue Fox Vibrac spinner. Um, using the uh, chartreuse one, but I see a lot of people using pinks and uh, chartreuse and some other colors uh, like orange. But uh, let's see if we can catch anything. First cast on the Vibrax. Look at that sunrise right there. That is so nice. And the skies are looking pretty clear right now. It looks like it's gonna be a sunny day today, which is our last day. The rest of the, uh, the days that we're here, or we were here, it's been cloudy and rainy. So this is actually nice. You can see all the mountains. Man, it's uh, Valdez is a very nice place. Look at that. So somebody just got a fish on right there. So I think this spot is gonna, ooh, there you go, jumper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah, that's a big guy. Wait. Let's go ahead and walk him. It's our last day too. Man. Still wanna go fishing but you gotta go. Oh nice, okay. I don't know if you guys can see this from the GoPro. The scenery here in Valdez, Alaska is definitely hard to beat.
So we are here uh, by the uh, hatchery. So that's the uh, hatchery right there. And man, just look at this nice view around us. definitely gonna be missing this place for the second time. <laughs> time to go grab our fish. All right, so the RV is a little bit of a mess right now, but uh, we just picked up our processed fish from uh, Fish Central. So they actually did very good vacuum sealing these fish. So as you can see, they're pretty tight in there and they're actually fully frozen. So definitely recommend this if you guys uh, are coming here in Alaska. We're currently at the gas station and check this out. I've actually never seen the uh, gauge be at a hundred dollars and I still had uh, about half a tank but uh, I don't know I think uh, this RV is not too bad it'll probably take us about 200 bucks to fill it in so yeah it's, it's still pretty hefty uh, considering it only goes eight miles per gallon So we're currently on the way back to Anchorage, but man, look at this right behind us. So there's currently three falls right behind us. There's one, number two, and number three down there. And this falls right here is called Bridal Vale. We're currently driving for Keystone Canyon. Just look at that, that's amazing. currently having breakfast here at Thompson Pass, but I just wanted to show you guys what this place looks like. So there's Worthington Glacier right behind us. We've actually been there before in a couple of videos ago. That's a glacier right there. First glacier. A bluish color. Sean and I did a quick hike to the uh, Worthington Glacier. Pretty quick hike. It's about 20 minutes uh, from the visitor center all the way down to the very first uh, spot where you can touch the actual glacier. Just check out the landscape right behind me. There's a lot of mountains and there's a lot of uh, mountains up there with uh, snow still in the middle of August. It's a little bit windy outside, time to get back to the RV. loud in here. finally here in Anchorage, Alaska. Just returned the RV, so we're just kind of checking out Anchorage, checking out a couple of fishing spots that we've fished before. We're currently here at Ship Creek in downtown Anchorage, just trying to see what's up, see what's going on, see if we can put on our waders. I don't know if I'm missing something here or people just don't want to fish uh, Ship Creek, but it is currently very empty, which is kind of weird because Last year, we were here just catching cohos, silver salmon, but for some reason, just look at that. There's nobody. So there's one, one guy fishing down there. There's another guy fishing all the way over there. And I don't know what's going on. That thing's been there for a little bit. A little bit, okay. <laughs> That was actually there last year, so. This is actually the spot right here 
you come down these uh, stairs right down here, and that's basically where the spot is. And people catch them all over this uh, creek right here. Right now should be the prime time here for uh, coho salmon or silver salmon here in uh, downtown Anchorage. So I don't know, I don't know where, <laughs> where did all the people go here, because typically you would see lines of just fishermen just trying to catch coho salmon down here. So definitely comment down below if you know what's going on. I'm not gonna be able to post this uh, video today, but uh, today is uh, the 28th of August. So if you know what's going on, because I don't really know what's going on right now, and there's nobody. There's two people uh, fishing Ship Creek right now here in downtown Anchorage. Alaska Department of Fish and Game uh, does provide some information on their website. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, they've actually increased the uh, bag limits to 12 coho. Typically though, here in this creek, uh, you can only catch three cohos or three silver salmon. They've increased the bag limits, but there's nobody here. So I'm guessing there's not a whole lot of fish or there's just no fish on this creek. You see any fish? Last year, Kay and I actually got stuck right there, right in the middle of that uh, muddy clay, trying to grab our fish. Yep, you saw that right. We actually ended up uh, renting a U-Haul <laughs> in the middle of uh, returning our RV and trying to get back to the airport to drop off our luggage. Uh, we are now here at the upper portion of Ship Creek, which typically would be packed with people, but look at that. Look at the shorts. There's nobody. Nobody's fishing right here. Do you see some pinks? Look at that. So we're actually on top of the bridge and there's some pinks on the side, which is kind of interesting. Look at the pink trying to struggle upstream. So typically that side and that side are both packed with people. And there's just lures flying around but right now it's very empty. I don't know what's going on. And there's the bait shack right there. It's uh, still open. There's the, uh, I think this is the seafood bridge or bridge restaurant or something. So this place is definitely dead. As in, very dead. <laughs> so I'll definitely link in the description down below the, was it, was it one or two trips that we made down here? Here? Yeah, I think we made a couple of trips down here. Like yeah. Four or five? <laughs> Yeah, so I'll definitely link that video down in the description below. I looked at the Alaska Department of Fish and Game website to see if there's any kind of regulations, if it's uh, not allowed to fish uh, Ship Creek right now, but in fact, they actually increased the bag limit. So, I don't know, pretty interesting. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, check that out. So there's a, uh, yeah, I'd a say in the 25, king that's kind of spawned up already. You can see how kind of red the body is. So this moment's pretty tense. So there's actually a couple of fish down there at the bottom of the post. And there's one person fishing from the shore. And there's the, uh, the folks right over here trying to tell her where to cast. There's two of them now. You can kind of see them right down there. We are now here in our modest apartment here in Washington and it's time to check out the status of our fresh fish from Alaska. Alright, so here's the box right here and here, let me go ahead and turn this around so you guys can see the uh, Made in Alaska sticker. <laughs> Looking at the box, this is definitely not from Fred Meyer. The box is from Fred Meyer, but the contents is from Alaska, from Valdez, Alaska. Check that out. So there's the sticker right there, made in Alaska. Seven. Time to open it up. Seven. 
Here you go. You excited? Oh yeah. Let's see if the styrofoam actually made it here, Washington. I'm always kind of scared about chipping stuff like this. Mm. Ah. Ah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's true. See, look at that. The styrofoam box even has a uh, bear right there in the middle. Very Alaskan. Trying to maximize the uh, baggage fees. It's, it's definitely not cheap. It's about 40 bucks, but I think that's actually cheaper than uh, doing a FedEx or UPS next day delivery for uh, fresh seafood. I wanna see where's my last salmon catch. Oh, over here. There you go. The biggest one. This is my last silver salmon. Look, so huge. Just look at the size of this thing. Fresh Alaskan silver salmon. We're gonna go ahead and cook our last and only catch yesterday. Look at how orange this color is. And that's silver salmon. I'm going to slice a little bit for sashimi. There are bones, so we need to remove it. I'm using a puller to um, remove all the bones in the middle. Look at that skin. So just got back from the store, uh, apparently we forgot this, which is a very important thing if you're making sashimi. Hopefully I got the, uh, the right one. It looks like it's the right one, but I can't really tell unless I actually open up the, uh, the package. All right, so time to get started cooking. Actually, I lied, so Kay's gonna be cooking. <laughs> the pan is already heated up, and just gonna put using olive oil. Kay's got the uh, salmon pieces here that she's gonna go ahead and sear in this hot cast iron. For our ingredients, we're gonna keep it simple. I'm going to use just the pepper and salt. So just gonna go ahead and try the uh, piece of pan-seared silver salmon. Mmm. Is it good? Very fresh, mildly seasoned, just the way I like it. Mm. I'm gonna try another bite. Very good. I'm going to fry the skin. So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely like uh, salmon belly. I know a lot of folks, when they process uh, salmon, they don't actually keep uh, the uh, salmon belly for some reason. I don't know, we've seen a lot of folks in uh, Valdez, Alaska, processing their fish and just throwing away the bellies. And I'm like, man, that is the best part. It's got a lot of uh, fatty, uh, fatty stuff. Uh, I was gonna say omega fatty acid. There's a lot of fats, very, very good meat in that belly so we ended up keeping all of the bellies and this is one of the best ways to cook them well, i'm definitely excited about this dinner but we're also going to go ahead and pair this dinner with a chateau 
I don't know what ST is. Is it Saint Chateau Saint Michel? Uh, it's a sweet Riesling. Dinner is ready. So we've got the uh, seared salmon right there. That's a seared silver salmon. And here's the uh, silver salmon sashimi. And we also have some asparagus as a side. And hey, hold on. I forgot my rice. Ta-da. Time to try the uh, sashimi with soy sauce and wasabi. That's really good. The meat's very tender. Nothing beats fresh salmon. Tastes good. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> Tastes even better if you caught it. <laughs> Wasabi got you? <laughs> Tears of joy from the wasabi. So we definitely cleaned up that dining table. That silver salmon was so fresh and with the sashimi and this pan seared silver salmon. Dinner was so amazing. All right, folks, so that is the end of our Alaskan series. If you haven't seen the rest of the videos, check out the links below. Hit the like button to support the channel. It definitely helps us out. Leave a comment below because we want to hear from you. And if you haven't yet subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.